converted. However, I really am concerned that not just about the water, but this is a sign of how decisions are being made in our city. And um, if you have um, uh, suggestions on how to get back that democracy, I think two things that are examples to me, and if you have comments, but just things like, um, there have been no public meetings on this. The forum in the city of Regina, the public gathering space for this kind of thing is no longer there. And uh, meetings seem to be with stakeholders. If you have some experience, because taxpayers, ordinary people, are no longer invited to have their input. Um, there is a Design Regina meeting coming up, if people know. It's the only public meeting. It has nothing to do with anything that you could specifically pin down on. But it is the only public meeting that I have a chance to go, and I'm going to go and say I am totally against the privatization of infrastructure. However, if you have suggestions about how we can get back that ability to have that information presented because I think this is only one decision but that's how decisions are being made. If you have a more global response, I'd appreciate it. Oh, good evening. Uh, I'm Tim Anderson. I'm the president of Local 21 and I just wanted to provide a little bit of context in, in terms of this discussion. This is uh, um, frustrated is, doesn't even begin to describe uh, our local feelings. Uh, we can go back, uh, we can go back, um, well, let's go back to 1999 when they phased out the business tax. Uh, and government grants shrank, uh, years of 0% mill rate increases, them stealing, I shouldn't say stealing, allocating money from reserves to get to those 0% mill rate increases. The infrastructure problem just didn't pop up yesterday. <laughs> this infrastructure problem's been known for a long time. So, so what we're doing now is we're paying the price for all those years of what I call fiscal mismanagement. And it just doesn't come down to our water treatment system. Let's talk about the recycling. We are going to be paying double the recycling costs because they contracted out that service because they didn't want us to do it. We have the most effective garbage collection service probably in North America. We pick up probably 80 to 90,000 homes in a bi-weekly basis, and we could have done the recycling for half the cost. But because Councillor Mike O'Donnell, who seems to be uh, Paul's best friend every time I <laughs> talk to him, <laughs> purposely threw out uh, what they called a benchmark, so that as soon as somebody met that benchmark, we weren't, we weren't even in the ballgame. Then we can go back to the small vehicle transfer station at the landfill. We have, a, we have uh, the ability to ask for documents in terms of costs and, and all those other good things that are associated with projects. And with their numbers that they provided to us, we showed them a potential of a $10 million savings over 10 years with the small vehicle transfer station. They contracted out to Carmen Loris because Carmen Loris pays them over $2.5 million a year in tipping fees. And Carmen's not shy about reminding me of that every time I talk to him. We can talk about a number of things. This council, not just this council, this council's got a history of looking at us like we're a special interest group. And you know what? We are a special interest group, but I can tell you that we're not about just our jobs. We are we are the only ones that go to council, and my uh, my friend uh, Mr. Elliott and the Council of Canadians are also part of that, but we are the only ones that go to council, and we represent you. And we try to do things in terms of what's best for our community. And, and I get frustrated because the Canadian Federation of Business, uh, Business Owners or the Taxpayers Federation they always paint us that we're, we're, we're selfish and we're, and we're just for the workers, but we're not. We're going to see in the next four to five years that Walls is starting to show some cracks. And right now the city of Regina is broke, and we are the ones who are going to, be, going to be paying for all that, all those years of mismanagement. So I don't know if I got a question here, Paul. I just want to say I want to thank you guys for coming. I think that this is a huge issue. And right now we feel a little outgunned. But I can tell you, we, uh, you, you put us at ease with you and Maude coming here because I, they have to understand that uh, if they're going to if they're going to deal with Local 21, they're not only going to be dealing with Local 21, but they're going to be dealing with QP, with people like Maude, the Canadian, uh, with with Mr. Elliot here, and uh, and we are going to take these people to task. And as soon as somebody catches on to this smoke and mirrors show, Mr. Fogier won't be in office, Mr. O'Donnell won't be in office, and we'll start putting people back that are actually there to represent our interests, not their business budget. <laughs> Thank you for that.
passionate statement and an incredibly important one. And I think it goes to the question uh, with Linda and uh, others before that around the core of democracy. And what we're dealing with here is a, a situation where <clears throat> we get frustrated because we elect people and we think that they're going to do the right thing for the reasons that we elected them, uh, and they do the, the wrong things for all sorts of reasons that we all know. And I don't I don't know the answer to the question about can we you know force them to open up their books and so on. But we really do have to uh, find ways to hold these people more accountable. <clears throat> I have this um, view that uh, or this theory that elected politicians are the first genetically engineered humans among us. <laughs> they you know sound so different, and then they get into power, and suddenly all the, there's exceptions. I know that, but not as many as one as one needs. All I can tell you from my experience is that when something deeply matters to a community, for some reason, something catches fire, something happens, and I have watched it around water all over the world. I don't know exactly why, although I remember asking one of the water warriors in Bolivia who put him, I mean, there was a war, they run in the army. It was really a very serious situation. People were killed, they did win in the end, but it was really a revolution, one of the first water wars. And I said, why water? Because they came and they took your, 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 your silver and copper mines, they took your energy, they privatized everything else. And he said, because water is, is life. And you know, I just, shoot me with a bullet rather than make me die of thirst or make me watch my kid die this way. So I've, I've watched the raw politics in the global south and they are very raw, of course. But they're raw here too, because this is about our fundamental rights. This is something that people just get. You don't have to have anything very complicated. People understand that there's a limited amount of water on the earth. The demand is going straight up. The supply is going straight down. If we are going to survive, we have to take care of it, and we have to share it better. That's just as simple as that. I mean, it's really, really, it's what is the three rules of permaculture is take care of the land and, and nature, take care of the people, and share the surplus. This is the way we're going to save the world's water. So it becomes a very personal thing. And from my experience, if you can get people's hearts in this, if they start to understand what this is about, nothing will stop you from winning. We watched it in Victoria. We didn't talk about Victoria. Phenomenal fight back against the privatization of a wastewater treatment plant. I spoke there one night. There were people lined up around the block you couldn't get in. It was like a rock concert or something. It was just people just get it when it comes to water. And I remember just to tell you the, oh, two quick things to say. One is that uh, in Abbotsford, the only person, the only counselor who was returned to office was the woman who asked the question. <laughs> and she was, she was, she was returned with a, uh, a, a stunning number of, of votes. I mean, just a, a kind of unprecedented. And she said, well, now we'll roll off our sleeves and we'll find a solution, a non-P3 solution. That was her quote in the paper the next day. But just a quick word about this and that. I know I don't expect all of the councillors to suddenly see the light, but I have watched change happen. And I remember when we fought a landfill on an aquifer up in Georgian Bay in Ontario, fought for years and years and years, and it came down to the summer that they were bringing the big heavy equipment in. But this water had been tested as the purest water that's ever been tested on Earth. Maybe there's other water, but nothing cleaner in a lab in Germany. So what do you do with that? You put a massive garbaged up on it, right? And a big diaper in it and hope it doesn't leak. Uh, prime, prime farmland. And the people have been fighting. So the group of uh, uh, First Nations women set up a peace camp. And they just happened to hold prayer vigils in front of the heavy equipment at 5 o'clock in the morning every morning. So the equipment couldn't get in. And we held it long enough that, that it was too late then. The frost was going to come and it, we were going to miss the opportunity. So we actually delayed them a year. So then they started arresting people. And they arrested a farm couple, the, the wife of a farm couple, um, in their 80s, and when the police came together, she was baking butter tarts for the church bazaar. <laughs> so uh, we cleverly said, come on in and have tea and butter tarts before we take you down, and we used the opportunity to call the media, of course. So, uh, <laughs> the was all there to see her getting led away, no handcuffs or anything, but she did say, I've never even had a parking ticket in my whole life, but if I'm going down, I'm going down for water. Uh, Oak Comes County Council, which is the mayors of all these small villages and towns, in this area, because it's a rural area, packed, there must be 1,500 people, I'm not making that up, but packed to the guild from the county council, and whoever couldn't get in is outside, the national media is there, this has just become this issue, right? 
And there's a guy who's the, the mayor of Tiny Township. He's one big guy. He's six foot four, big town guy. Retired businessman, love fighting protesters. Lo it's called Site 41. Love Site 41. He was excited about the dump site. We thought, depending on how passionate he gets today and how many people he pulls with them, we may lose. Because this was a vote on a moratorium that would kill it. And so it was just, it was pure raw politics that day. I'll never forget it. People throwing buns from the... <laughs> it was so passionate. <clears throat> he gets up to speak. Starts to cry. Says, I woke up this morning. We're going to fight for Site 41. We're going to build the dump site. Love fighting protesters. Knew you'd all be here. So I went into my, my office, my home office. My grandkids had found one of the Stop Site 41 sites. He said, they put it on my desk, and they said, they wrote the word Papa on it. And he said, in that second, my job description changed. And I became a steward of the water. And as long as I live, Site 41 will never be built, he said. And we won. You can win on water. Water can open a door to everything else. It's the winner. It's the one to start with. You can win this one in Regina. And we're here together with you. And please, we mustn't lose the opportunity. Anyone in here who wants to get involved, Please get involved with Jim and Tim. Uh, let us have your names. Let us find a way to get to you because we have to organize really quickly. So if you're interested in taking this a step further, be a water steward. Um, as uh, as uh, Gandalf said on the night that uh, in Lord of the Rings, when when the when the army of evil was going to kill everything, he said. Um, that, that it'll be all right if anything can still get the, through this night that can grow fruit or bear flower and uh, bear fruit uh, and grow and, and, and grow a flower again in the days to come, as it. Um, for he says, for I too am a steward. And, and that's what we are in this room, and we have to make more of us. And water's the entry, I promise. Thank you. Yeah.